I'm actually like in love with this kit from Void. This isn't paid, this isn't sponsored, but this kit just feels so nice. The material it's made out of is just absolutely sick. The grip is on the arms and the legs are amazing, it doesn't roll up. And this digital camo in particular looks absolutely incredible. If you haven't watched yesterday's video, you should go and watch it. I rode over 100 miles and today I'm feeling it, like proper. But the plan for today is to do about two hours, all in zone one, zone two, with some short but max sprint efforts. On paper today's session isn't very hard, but the fatigue in my legs after yesterday's training session is probably going to make it quite a hard one. But either way, there's no rain in the forecast today. Should be a little bit drier than yesterday. There's not too much wind about. Hopefully it's going to be a good day. It kind of feels weird to say this, the fact that we are only a week into August, but the season's starting to wind down now. It's starting to come to an end. There's not a lot of racing left, which is pretty shitty, especially when there's racing on in February and barely any racing in September when the weather's way, way nicer. So because of that, there's no racing on this weekend. Uh, I'm racing the Northwest Road Race Champs next weekend. So I've got a couple of weeks now to really just focus on my training, focus on a real good solid training block because I want to be in as best form as possible for the end of the season. There's maybe only one or two races left now. Red light. So I imagine today's going to be a pretty uneventful day. It's just two hours, a couple of sprints, pretty steady. No intervals, nothing to really report on. So I think the best idea is to do a quick cinematic sequence and then we're going to jump straight home. made it home from, just made it home from training and I know today wasn't an interval session it was just a fairly easy ride with a few sprints but I want to quickly talk about the importance of interval training particularly for a competitive cyclist without going into detail too much about the biological and the sciencey sort of aspect training at a high intensity causes physiological adaptions to the body for example it can reduce your blood lactate levels it can increase efficiency within the body within the neuromuscular system it allows you to become more resistant to fatigue and it also can increase vo2 max and and also your stroke volume. Stroke volume is the amount of blood ejected around the body in one beat. And when you're putting your body under this excessive stress, this high intensity training, you're working your muscles, you're working your heart. Therefore your heart becomes stronger, it becomes bigger, and its general blood capacity increases. And that's not to say all or most of these adaptions won't happen unless you do an interval training. It just speeds up that process. You know, if you're riding all day, every day at a nice steady tempo, you're probably gonna become a little bit more resistant to fatigue, but you're not gonna become quite as resistant had you been doing some interval training. And it's also great for cyclists who don't have a massive amount to train. It allows you to get a lot of work done in a small period of time. For example, the training stress that you create in a two hour endurance ride, you can replicate that same overall training intensity within an hour to an hour and 10 minutes. Trying to find some energy this afternoon to do something productive, but I'm struggling. It feels like I've been sedated or, or under some crazy drugs because I am just wiped out. So I'm gonna go down to the local cafe, not pub, get a coffee and get some food and hopefully that will sort me out a little bit. Introduce yourself to the new viewers. Uh, hi there, my name's Ed Slater. I'm 16 years old. All right, so I came up with this, well, I hope it's gonna be a sick idea. Something completely different, something completely away from the norm of, of this vlog, this cycling vlog, but I think it's gonna be cool. All right, so we've made it to, we call it an undisclosed location. Yeah. yeah. We've made it to an undisclosed location. This used to be a massive old school. It's completely abandoned now and run down. It's gonna be pretty insane. And if there's anyone watching this video that can potentially get me in trouble, I just I just should probably say that we've got, we've got full permission to, to do what we're about to do. Permission. Permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously we've got Edward here. We also got my boy Michael. If you're an avid viewer of the comment section, you'll probably know who Michael is. <laughs> Not with the back back on. <laughs> Easy mate. So I'm gonna keep my voice down just in case there's any security men walking around. But as I mentioned before, this is an old school and it shut down, I think in about 1990. And since then it's just been like abandoned and derelict. So there could be anything here. All right, so that's where we wanna to get to, but it's like surrounded in a big lake. So we're gonna try and find a road that goes in. Unless, unless you both fancy swimming. Um, not keen on swimming. We're not keen on swimming. There's a security guard den. No, we're, go we're gonna go and see if anyone's there. Come on, guy. 
that right there is a security hook. We don't think anyone's here because there's like huge steel gates that you can't really get through, even for the security men. But Mike's gone to check it out anyway. It's open, there's like bottles of water and shit. No one's there? No one's there. There's a big uh, CCTV hole next to it though. Yeah. I don't know. Camera's on. The camera's What, the TV's on? That looks on. focus on me, focus on me. Alright, we're unsure if there's security here or not. So before we do go in, Mike just sent his drone up to have a bit of a scout around. Though if there is a security guard, we've probably just given our position away by the sound of that drone. How are we looking, Mike? Looking good. All clear. All right, abrupt ending to that little adventure. We uh, walked up to the security hut and there's a guy sat in there with his headphones on watching watching a film on his iPad. Like obviously he didn't notice that we were there but there's CCTV cameras everywhere and there's a TV screen with all the CCTV cameras in his in his office so all he has to do is stop watching what he's watching and what, look at the CCTV cameras and then he'll see us so there's no point going in, now we've just got to get out again. Where can you go under? He asked me to stay right So this place is just too insane to go away without any footage whatsoever. Luckily, I've got my drone. I mean, you can see what this place looks like from the sky. Hopefully that was a successful drone mission. We're gonna to have to come back here another day. Maybe when the security's not here or we can pay him off or something maybe and get in. So that would be cool. See you later. Boss See you. Bye. Love you. Shout out to all my fans, follow me on Insta, <laughs> head underscore Slater. <laughs>